Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new 2021 Amazon Fire HD 10 Plus. Now they've released two models. This is the Plus version with 4 gigs of RAM and wireless charging, but they've also released the 2021 Fire HD 10, which doesn't have wireless charging. You can actually get it in a few different colors and it has 3 gigs of RAM. I also went ahead and picked up the new keyboard case combo that they offer for the new HD 10, but uh, overall I've always been a big fan of these fired HD tablets, especially the HD 10. Now the last model that they released was actually a great performer, but it was lacking on RAM. It only came with 2 gigs and it did have some pretty big bezels. With these new models, like I mentioned, they have added more RAM across the board and they've slimmed down the bezels a bit. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at this new tablet. We're going to run some benchmarks, test out some gaming, some video playback, and see if it's worth picking up as a budget tablet. Now these run something called Fire OS 7, which is actually based on Android 9. And luckily, we do have a tool to install Google Play to this very easily. You can do it manually from the tablet, or you can download an application for your Windows machine called Fire Toolbox. Press a couple buttons, and you'll have Google Play up and running. Now that's exactly what I'm going to do with this before we even get started. Because as a lot of us already know, the Amazon store is lacking when it comes to games and applications that you can run on this. Now along with the Fire HD 10, you're also going to get a 9 watt charger, our USB Type-C cable, and a quick start guide. That's about it. Go ahead and start this up for the first time. I will need to get some stuff installed on this so we can get into some testing. But uh, yeah, overall, I'm really hoping for some great performance out of this MediaTek chip that they chose to use. Which is actually the same chip they used in the last Fire HD 10. Amazon is also offering a case slash keyboard combo. It's a Bluetooth keyboard. Uh, overall, I'm not sure how much I would use this, but I still wanted to pick it up. You charge the unit up itself over USB Type-C, and you connect it to the tablet using Bluetooth. I gotta say, this is pretty heavy. It's almost the same weight as the tablet itself, but we do have the top that detaches, and this is just going to clip right onto the back of the Fire HD 10. It should go right in here pretty easily. That way we have a little bit of protection, and when we have that keyboard closed up, it will protect the screen. But this would be great for a lot of people who do a lot of emailing and document editing from their tablet. So taking a look around the tablet itself, the low-end model of the Plus only comes with 32 gigabytes of internal storage, but we can add a micro SD card up to one terabyte. I've just thrown a 128 in here. They've kept all the buttons to one side. We also have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and USB type C for charging this up. It does have dual stereo speakers built in with Dolby Atmos. And when we compare the bezels to the last Fire HD 10, as you can see on the new 2021 model, they are slimmed down quite a bit. This is no Galaxy S7, but it's still a big improvement over last generation. When it comes to the specs of the new HD 10 Plus, for the CPU, we have a MediaTek 8183. It's also known as the Helio P60T. Four A73 cores at 2 GHz and four A53 cores at 2 GHz. For the GPU, we have that Mali G72 MP3 at 800 MHz, four gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM in the Plus model, three in the non Plus model, a 10.1 inch IPS LCD display at 1920 by 1200, built in AC Wi Fi, Bluetooth 5.0 a 6500 milliamp hour battery and they're claiming up to 12 hours of video playback on this. And as for the operating system, it's running Fire OS 7 which is based on Android 9. And yes, you can easily install Google Play and Google Play services. You can see the icon on the screen right here. And I've been able to download a lot of games and apps that we're going to test out in this video. When it comes to the overall user experience, it's definitely super smooth. Now, you will see Google Play installed on this version, but when you get this out of the box, the only thing you're really going to have is the Amazon App Store. But from here, you can download games and all of your favorite streaming apps, but I would definitely recommend installing Google Play. I've actually done a video on it using the older Fire 10 tablet, but I plan on making a new tutorial coming up soon on the channel, so keep an eye out. It just really makes the tablet more appealing given that we have access to Google Play and millions of apps that we can download here. But yeah, overall, it's been a really smooth experience. This MediaTek CPU can definitely keep up. The screen looks really beautiful, given that it's not an AMOLED display or anything like that. I mean, it's a good display that they chose to use here, and it is an upgrade over the last Fire HD 10. Now, when we're taking a look at these budget tablets, one of the main things people need to know is the Widevine level. That way, we know if we can get HD Netflix, HBO Go, and Amazon Prime. And luckily, this is certified with Widevine Level 1, so all of your favorite streaming apps will be able to do HD. Take a look here in the Netflix settings. As you can see, Full HD. 
And when it comes to these budget tablets, that's one thing that a lot of people need to look out for. The cheaper ones on the market, you can pick them up for like a hundred bucks on Amazon. They'll have wide vine level three. So you're basically just going to be stuck with standard definition through all of the streaming apps. And we'll just go ahead and test out some 1080p 60 FPS playback from YouTube. Make sure we're at 1080p. And you're not going to have any issues doing 1080 60 on this tablet. We have plenty of power here. And the built-in dual stereo speakers actually sound really good. And if you're holding this in landscape mode, like you're seeing now, we have the camera at the top. The speakers are actually facing upwards, so you're not going to block them off if you set this on your lap or anything like that. Moving over to some benchmarks. Unfortunately, I could not get Antutu to work correctly on this. Hopefully they will have an update in the near future. I tried an older version and the brand new version, and it just wouldn't run the graphics test. But here we are with Geekbench 5. Single core, 305, multi, 1093, and the next benchmark I ran was 3D Mark Slingshot. This tests OpenGL on the built-in GPU. We got a 1105. Now these aren't phenomenal benchmarks, but we want to see how this thing can game. So let's go ahead and test out a few of our favorite Android games. First up, we have Minecraft. 12 chunks, fancy graphics is on, and performance really isn't that bad. I mean, it's definitely playable like this. I did try to take the chunks up to around 14 and notice it start to lag out, but at 12, that's kind of the sweet spot, and it is playable. Next on the list, we have PUBG. I have the graphics set to low, and the frame rate set to as high as it can go. Unfortunately, this is not going to run at 60 FPS, even at low settings, but you can definitely get by playing this at 30 FPS, and it's really surprising to see it running this well. Moving over to Call of Duty Mobile, this is just a very well optimized game. I mean, they've done an amazing job with this. I've been able to run this at full speed, well, at playable speeds on lower end chipsets. And going into this, I had a good feeling it would work fine on this tablet. So we were getting great performance with all the games we tested so far, but I wanted to move up to Genshin Impact. This is just a harder game to run. We're at the lowest settings, 30 FPS, and we got a lot of stutter. I knew we were going to run into issues with this one. Uh, it just takes a little more to run this at full speed. Moving over to some emulation. First up, we have Dreamcast using ReDream. I'm upscaled to 1280 by 960. We have Marvel vs. Capcom 2 running here. FPS is up in the top left-hand corner, and we're running at full speed. Dreamcast isn't going to be an issue on this device using the ReDream emulator. N64 is another one that works really well on the Fire HD 10. I'm using the standalone version of Moopin AE from the Google Play Store, and I am upscaled to 800 by 600 but with this game here, we could probably go a bit higher. Here we have PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. Tekken 6, Vulcan Backend, 3x resolution. I consider this a mid-range game to run. On lower-end chipsets, it does struggle at these higher resolutions, but on the Fire HD 10, at least the 2021 model, you can see that we're running at full speed, even upscaled here. But there are harder PSP games to run, like Chains of Olympus, and with this one, I had to take it down to 1x, and even then, we still get some stutters, but it's doing a pretty decent job. It's trying its hardest. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator, and I knew we weren't going to get great performance out of this. I tried Vulkan and OpenGL with some hacks on in the background. OpenGL was definitely much better than Vulkan, but we're still not at full speed. So overall, the new 2021 Fire HD 10 Plus is a great budget tablet. And yes, I do consider this a budget tablet. If you go any lower, I mean, that's just a low-end tablet. You can find tablets in the same price range on Amazon with the same screen size, 
But keep in mind, most of the time, you're not going to be able to get those HD videos playing back from Netflix and HBO Go. And I think that's one of the main things that the Fire HD 10 has going for it versus some of the similarly priced tablets on Amazon right now. And as for the price, the HD 10 Plus that we took a look at in this video is going for 179, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and wireless charging. You can only get it in a single color. It's kind of a gray on the back, black on the front. Or you can opt for the Fire HD 10. This is the non-plus version, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, 3 gigabytes of RAM. They offer it in four different colors, but we have no wireless charging on this. When it comes to performance, mainly the only difference between the Plus and this one here is that extra gig of RAM. And if you'd like to have a lot of apps open in the background, then you might want to go with the Plus. But if you're good with app management, I would just go with this one here. Plus, you have the option of four different colors. But yeah, if you're looking for a budget Android tablet in the 10-inch range, I could definitely suggest either the Fire HD 10 or the HD 10 Plus. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I will have a tutorial on installing Google Play and a custom launcher coming up on the channel soon, so keep an eye out. If you're interested in picking either one of these up, I will leave a link in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this tablet, just let me know down below. But like always, thanks for watching.